So to use Kami in an assignment, we're going to log into Canvas with your Google Drive. And remember, you had to give Google permission to access your drive. So we're going to Dashboard. I'm going to go for Help for Students and Parents because this is where I have my sample. And then I have two Kami assignments. One says how to use Kami, and one says with a link. So let's first look at how we use Kami. So I'm going to click on how to use Kami. And in this assignment, you'll see that Kami opened right in the window of my, of my Canvas account. So I could start to use Kami right within that window. If we go back to the other that said with a link, your teacher could use this either way. It says load how to use Kami with link in a new window. So I'm also going to click in that assignment and see what that looks like. And you can see that Kami loaded in its own new tab and I no longer am in Canvas. Although I still have my submit button and it still knows when I click on this that I'm the demo student that this was assigned to. So I don't have to make a copy or do anything else. I just have to submit. So either way, your teacher could use this and you could continue to work the same way I'll show you. Let's go back and use the other one. They won't give you a choice. They'll use one or the other. So I'm back in my window. And the reason that your teacher might want to use the link is depending on the assignment. If it's wider, I don't want to get a scroll bar as I have here on the right hand side. I want you to see the whole assignment at one time. If my document was in landscape, I might have a scroll bar at the bottom as well, where I'd have to scroll from right to left to continue to see my document. So that's the difference between the two. Again, both have a submit button and both of them are set just to you as a student. To start to use Kami, I need to fill in these blanks. So I'm going to use my Kami tools on the left hand side. So I'm going to click my text box. I'm going to click right where I want my text to be. If I need to move it because I clicked a little low, I click on the lines and I'll drag that up a little bit. And right here, down the bottom, it's asking me for emoticon. So I'm going to click on my Kami toolbar. I'm going to look at all my emoticons and decide, decide what I was feeling. So maybe when I woke up, I was just feeling happy. And my emoticon goes in. It was going to be a special day. It wants a color. So again, I'm going to write a text. I can go down and choose more colors. And I could actually say that the sky was blue or the sky was gray and use a color for that. So we'll select blue and save. And now when I click to type, again, I can type the words blue. Remember again, if it's a little low and you want to move it up, I can just click on the sides and move them up. The weather was, and it wants a weather, my article of clothing. So I could have different things that I would want to do. I can add comments. I can mark this up, meaning that I can use a pen tool or a highlighter and say that I want to highlight the word weather and I want to make that yellow or I want to make that green. So if I select green and I highlight it, it becomes green. If I would want to do article of clothing and I would do that pink. So there are all the tools I can use in markup and it's a text highlighter or a box highlighter. I also have the ability to strike through a word or underline a word if I wanted to. A comment means that I'm going to click somewhere on the document and it'll put a comment window over to the other side. So if I would want to leave a comment for my teacher, I could say, I don't understand. How about if we say, instead of I don't understand, I love this assignment. So I could put a comment in. Text-to-speech allows the document to be read to me. So when I click the arrow button. The best day ever one day. I woke up feeling underscore, 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 underscore. I'm going to stop that right there. It's reading all these underlines. It's not reading what I put into it. It's reading to you what the best day ever was. But if you needed to, to have the document read to you, you could have that happen. You have a dictionary and you have a select tool. We also have a drawing tool. So if I would want to draw a little cloud or something like that on my document, I could draw that. It wasn't the best cloud, but it's still a drawing. I have shapes that I could add by clicking on the shape and again, inserting them into the document and it'll make the shape. 
I could use my tools to change the color of the shapes and draw another shape. And that one's blue. I have an eraser tool, so I can erase anything that I put on the document. I could erase all annotations or drawings and shapes. So by clicking on that, I want to go over the drawings or shapes and just highlight right across them and they will delete. If I would want to erase annotations, I could click across it and delete. I can insert an image and I can do that. I could have done that from my emoji. So I could do it if I have an image on my computer. I could do it from an image that's in my Google Drive or I could do a Google search for an image. So let's do that. So I'm gonna Google search for a smiley face. And there we go. So instead of using the little teeny tiny emoticons that were there, I'm gonna choose this one and select it. And there it is. So I can put that into my document and I can choose the little button on the side to resize that and move that over right to where I want it to be. When I've completed my document and everything is there, I want to use the submit button at the top of my page. So I will submit my assignment, hit submit. Now, I don't want to do that until I complete my document. Notice it saved it to your Google Drive as well. And I could unsubmit it if I realized I forgot to do something or I could leave it alone and I'm done. My teacher knows it's for me because my name is on the document. And that's how to annotate or fill in a CAMI assignment while you're in Canvas.